Hello everyone, my name is Haley Cassidy, AmeriChem's Global Digital Marketing Manager. I'd like to thank you all for joining today's webinar, Antivirals in Plastics. AmeriChem has been offering antimicrobial solutions to the synthetic fibers and thermoplastics industry for over 20 years, utilizing EPA and BPR registered additives. Recently, AmeriChem has been developing antiviral master batches and compounds for synthetic fibers, non-wovens, and molded articles. The products show strong antiviral properties using a variety of test methods, including ISO 18184 and ISO 21702, which is what we'll be diving into today. All attendees are muted, so please send in your questions through the questions tab, and we will address them at the end of the presentation during our Q&A segment. Today, we'll start with a brief introduction of our panelists and who AmeriChem is. Then we'll talk about key drivers for incorporating antivirals and polymers, then antimicrobial and antiviral fundamentals, followed by antiviral efficacy data for synthetic fibers, textiles, and molded articles. Lastly, we'll discuss potential end use applications and wrap up with a Q&A segment. Today, I am joined by Matthew Miklos, AmeriChem's Vice President of Global Technology and Innovation, and Dr. Vaman Kolkarni, AmeriChem's Global Director of Technology and Business Development in Fibers. I will now turn it over to our panelists for them to give brief bios of themselves, followed by the rest of the presentation. Well, thanks, Haley, and good morning to everybody, or good evening, uh, wherever you are in the world today. Um, my name is Matt Miklos. I'm the Vice President of Global Technology and Innovation for AmeriChem. And you may have uh, joined us back in 2020 when we first introduced a primer on uh, antimicrobials and making surfaces inhospitable to microbes. If you didn't get a chance to look at that, please reference our website. You can see a full list of our webinars and you can, uh, you can view those at your leisure. Um, over the past year to 18 months, obviously it's been a very, very stressful time for many. And with all the attention on, on the virus, um, we've had a lot of questions in regards to making surfaces less hospitable to viral activity. And of course, this drove development on our side to take this to another level. We're excited to present those findings with you uh, today. Um, but before we dive in, let me introduce myself a little bit further and I'll turn it over to VG afterwards. Um, I've spent my entire 34 year uh, professional career in engineering polymers, uh, uh, specifically around um, performance compounds, performance master batch, uh, TPE compounds, and even composites and decorative laminates for transportation interiors. So certainly, um, between VG's expertise in fibers, which he's going to mention, and, and some of my background, we're uh, excited to answer some of your questions on implying uh, some of these um, effective additives into your compounds to make your surfaces uh, less hospitable to microbes. Uh, presenting with me today um, is Dr. Uh, Vamen Kulkarni, uh, Merchem's Global Director of Technology and Business Development. Uh, in fibers, and, and VG is our expert in antimicrobials and antiviral type additives. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to uh, VG for an introduction of himself. VG? Thanks, Matt. Uh, good morning, everyone, or good evening. Um, you know, my background uh, uh, is primarily in material science uh, or uh, 35 years industrial experience in material science of uh, a variety of materials uh, from polymers, uh, man-made fibers, functional additives, uh, colorants, uh, and conductive polymers. Uh, I'm with AmeriChem uh, 30 plus years, uh, uh, currently leading uh, our efforts in technology and business development uh, globally in the area of uh, man-made fibers. Uh, Matt, I think it would be a good idea to begin with uh, some uh, some background on AmeriChem. Uh, Absolutely, VG. Uh, let me. I've got a few pages on this subject, and we'll give everybody a high-level background. I think you can make three key points about um, this particular page. Number one, um, we're proud to be uh, to announce that we're celebrating our 80th year uh, of business at AmeriChem. So a lot of celebration here uh, at AmeriChem. And, and across the globe at our various locations. 
Um, all of that has been in, a, in the environment of a privately held company. Um, we have 12 locations across the globe, spanning the NAFTA uh, region, Europe, and, and Asia. And we're about uh, 900 uh, people strong across the globe. So VG and I are very fortunate to work with some very talented people across the globe. Um, without reading all the details on this slide, I'd, I'd really like to point out one of the more interesting aspects of AmeriChem is we, we basically align our, um, ourselves technically, commercially, and in many cases through manufacturing expertise at plant locations by specific industry uh, segments and sub-segments. And this enables us to provide a very high level of expertise um, to be brought to our customers, whether it's a fiber customer or an injection molding automotive customer. Um, we're able to have subject matter experts to help you with your application needs. Uh, ultimately, as the page concludes at the bottom, our, we see our role as helping your product look better, uh, provide the right haptic and, and, and feel, process efficiently and cost effectively in your application, and ultimately endure in the application uh, environment across the lifespan of that uh, particular article. Matt, a uh, lot of uh, good information on that slide. Uh, you know, obviously, in this uh, last 80 years, uh, we have been serving uh, uh, in multiple industries and have developed uh, solutions for uh, many of the common polymeric uh, challenges in the industry. I think uh, it would be good for our viewers uh, to listen to some of that. So, certainly, VG. Um, let me walk you through the different industry. Uh, segments and sub-segments, and I'll, I'll divide this up into areas of our own core competency, both master batch and full performance compounds. So first on the master batch side, um, please take note of uh, the top right of your page, the transportation sub-segment, uh, where we're very strong and a, and a market leader in automotive uh, interiors, for instance. So any of the hard touch surfaces within a vehicle, the soft surfaces within a vehicle that might be more thermoplastic elastomer in nature, uh, even exterior applications like window encapsulation where we can imply functional performance and, and long-term UV protection. Um, and then we take that and we translate that into other industry sub-segments and transportation such as recreational vehicles, um, a side-by-side -side ATV, a wave runner, um, and other uh, types of recreational uh, vehicles, golf carts, um, and, and then even in heavy truck uh, markets. Also in the master batch side of things, uh, down on the bottom left of your screen, you'll see building and construction. And the way we define building and construction is building materials, uh, many being in the residential subsegment, uh, so cladding or, or siding uh, for, for a house, uh, would, you would see our color technology and UV protection technology. Uh, composite decking and fencing is certainly a trend on the rise. And when you see those beautiful decks with built-in wood grain streaking and custom color, long-term durability, that's a lot of American technology in those surfaces. Roofing and railing, and even window and door, you'll see trends where windows are, are by and large white, but you'll see more dark colors these days as well. And there's a lot of technology in uh, the performance of those uh, lineals as well as the long-term uh, weathering and aging uh, for those. Uh, rounding out the master batch side, synthetic fibers. Uh, there's a lot of technology in, in fiber, uh, um, polymer, uh, polymer solutions for the filaments for fibers. And you'll see four key sub-segments here. Carpet, where you'll have heavier deniers um, or bulk continuous filaments. In carpet fiber, where we're putting in um, the custom color and uh, functional additives into the melt stream. So that, that fiber is integral throughout the uh, core uh, of the filament. Uh, also in textiles, uh, where you'll have a finer denier um, in, in everything from athletic apparel um, to outdoor awnings, for instance. Uh, synthetic turf uh, for playing fields across the globe. Um, and in non-wovens. And in non-wovens, you're gonna see a lot more functional additives uh, to make a non-woven article softer, uh, more hydrophilic or hydrophobic, um, anti-static. Uh, and you'll see those products in filtration equipment, 
um, and hygiene uh, type products like whether it be adult diapers or, or children's diapers, for instance. On the um, full performance compounds and engineering plastic side of things, um, probably first and foremost, the center of your page healthcare market. Our engineering plastics divisions will focus largely on surgical instruments, uh, both functional parts and housings uh, on these very critical instruments with performance grades of engineering plastics on the higher end of the pyramid. Uh, these would have to be uh, perform very well, both functionally and through sterilization processes, pharmaceutical dispensers, and even tubing applications. Also in, in performance compounds and engineering compounds, the aerospace subsegment. Here you would find materials in aircraft interiors, commercial aircraft interiors, uh, mass transit interiors, um, and even military uh, type aircraft. Um, you'll see some other subsegments listed, including packaging, film and sheet, uh, and, and we can discuss those all in more detail uh, as we uh, move forward with the presentation and later in the Q&A. In regards to the locations of Americam across the globe, I mentioned earlier 12 locations across the NAFTA region, Europe, and in Asia. I'm talking to you today out of Northeast Ohio, uh, out of our corporate headquarters where we um, have all of our R&D centers and application development centers. Uh, VG is joining us today from Concord, North Carolina in the Southeast. You can see other locations there in the US and in Europe, would like to point out our newest facility in Rebay, Denmark, which puts us on the mainland in Europe. That was an acquisition of controlled polymers, and we're excited to have that team with us uh, now in Europe. Also in Manchester, UK, uh, and in Asia, our flagship plant in Suzhou, and uh, more recently also uh, India, in Pune, India. Uh, before I leave the page, uh, please note the quality type certifications we have at the center bottom of the page. If there's any questions on that, we'd be happy to address those during the uh, Q&A portion of the presentation. That's a, that concludes a general overview of Americam. And before we get to the main subject matter, I'd like to pose a question back to Dr. Kokarni. VG, can you tell us the difference between bacteria and viruses? what may be the key drivers in the marketplace that are driving more interest in this? And then ultimately, how would you incorporate them in the polymers? Yeah, thanks, Matt, uh, glad to. I, I think let's uh, dig into the subject matter of today's webinar. You know, first of all, uh, with the definition of what a microbe is. Uh, is in a microbe as a family, it consists of many species. Uh, they're all microscopic in nature. Uh, and for the sake of the discussion, you know, we will limit our uh, discussion to bacteria and virus. So if you look at on a biological level, uh, what is the difference between the two? So bacteria are basically living cells, uh, you know, that can live inside or outside of a body. And given I and ideal conditions, be it darkness, uh, right humidity, right temperature, they can multiply very quickly and form what we call a biofilm or, or a colony of bacteria. So uh, the virus, on the other hand, have no cell of their own. So technically speaking, they're not uh, living or non-living species. They're basically a genetic material uh, encased in a protein, and they would need a host cell to survive and replicate. So, so that's the fundamental bit in, uh, difference between the two. Uh, Mary, if we go to the next slide, uh, let's look at uh, uh, some of the drivers uh, uh, for making inhospitable surfaces. For, first of all, you know, there has been an increased awareness uh, about COVID-19 uh, and the virus in general. Uh, you know, all of us have uh, experienced, uh, uh, you know, living through the pandemic for the last uh, 18 months or so, uh, the emphasis uh, in cleaning, sanitation. So it, at the very least, uh, everybody is very well educated uh, about uh, the microbes in general. Secondly, by now we know uh, that the viruses can live on various surfaces uh, on some surfaces uh, for hours and on other surfaces uh, uh, for days. 
And these are the very the surfaces that we come in contact with uh, our day-to-day -day life. So now we can see a need, uh, why there is a need for uh, uh, making these surfaces uh, inhospitable, to, uh, 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 inhospitable to microbes uh, at large. Now, during the same period of time, although we have been uh, working in the area of antimicrobials uh, for about 15 years or so, and the, generally there has been a more interest in developing solutions uh, uh, for uh, antimicro developing antimicrobial solutions uh, for uh, uh, effectiveness against bacteria and virus. And, and lastly, uh, the technology for incorporating those in various types of textiles or molded articles or surfaces has also increased. So together, you know, these form uh, kind of the basis uh, for uh, the drive for making surfaces inhospitable. I think, Matt, uh, you know, uh, you know, we bring a lot of solutions in the form of master batches and et cetera. I, I think it would be good idea uh, to let's uh, go through some of that. Uh, I would appreciate uh, if you could drive some of that. So. Thanks, Fiji. So you heard about some of the drivers in the marketplace and, and how long some of these microbes can survive on different surfaces. Now, our attention is going to be how to incorporate these functional additives into different polymer forms. And ultimately, what's leaving Americam out the door is going to be in a, in a, in a pellet form uh, for our processors to use. But we do that in, in kind of two different approaches. We could put the functional antimicrobial and antiviral technologies into both master batch form and into fully compounded uh, uh, form where you're using 100% of the compound in your injection molding or extrusion process, for instance. So by and large, the master batch, let's take a fiber uh, application, for instance. And I mentioned earlier, we're able to, um, to translate some of the success from one market to another. I mean, behind me on the table, you'll see a fine denier textile, for instance. So you take a PET polymer which would have what's called solution dye. So the custom color is integral to the whole uh, core of that, that fiber, which would probably be the diameter of, of a human hair follicle. So, so getting that core competency of Americam's dispersion technology and being able to also incorporate uh, antimicrobial or antiviral technology into a fiber would include either putting it into that master batch or a separate master batch, which could, which could be fed in the, into the melt stream during the fiber spinning process. On the other hand, when we came across molding opportunities in the marketplace, such as this pet feeding stand behind me, uh, where you have a functional TPE or an 80 shore A TPE in the mat portion and a hard polypropylene in the top portion here, not only is there aesthetic color technology matching those two different components, but, but VG helped us take some of our knowledge of antimicrobials, which were born in the, uh, the fiber side and incorporating those more in molded articles. So in that case, we're using a fully functional compounded approach in the TPE, where you can mold it in one shot and you have both color and aesthetics and, and efficacy built into the, the polymer compound. The stand on the other case is an injection molded part where you're molding natural polypropylene with two different master batches, a custom color master batch and a antimicrobial, antifungal, possibly antiviral type master batch. All of this can be done in, in various articles and applications from household uh, durable items to healthcare items and automotive interiors. Um, we're focusing on efficacy in as short as two hours. So you'll see in the coming pages, um, if you have common surface areas, which, which uh, a person may be exposed to, we are trying to test for efficacy in a very short period of time. And you'll see some of the data coming up here. We have seen effectiveness against influenza A, feline calicivirus, and SARS COVID-2. All of this is done in accordance with global test standards. VG is going to walk us through various of these. And um, but what we would suggest is for the customers, many of you online today, conduct your own testing on your finished article. We can, we can help consult you in that way um, and be sure to receive the proper regulatory approvals for your particular application. 
So that's kind of a round out of how we would do this in, in master batch and compounds. Um, VG, I'd like to turn it back to you and you can introduce everyone to how would one test for antiviral efficacy? What are the common test standards used in that, uh, in that uh, approach? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, one thing I might add, uh, Matt, is you know while the primary goal of creating a antimicrobial solution is the right choice of the chemistry uh, for that application, because we are uh, a master batch producer, or and uh, the most of these have to be, uh, you know, either molded or spun, you know many of the standard requirements such as the temperature stability at which the polymer is processed uh, and uh, all other uh, related uh, uh, topics uh, for a master batch, uh, be it dispersion quality, and if it has to be used in some other environment, all of those have to be met in addition to the, the, the antimicrobial, uh, the, the antibacterial and antiviral, uh, uh, you know, uh, aspects of it. So now, once we have designed the product, uh, how, how do we know that it functions uh, very well? Uh, how do we test it? Uh, two of the key tests uh, that uh, are followed in the industry for antiviral testing is the ISO 18184, which is typically used for textiles, and the ISO 21702, uh, uh, typically used with uh, plastics and non-porous surfaces. You know, these tests, uh, you know, are typically done by very few labs uh, and a lot more expensive to carry out uh, on a routine basis. So one of the good tests, uh, especially when you have a large number of samples uh, that needs to be screened, is a modified ATCC 100 with the MS2 bacteriophage uh, uh, virus, you know, that will allow us uh, to do uh, look at a, a wide range of materials. Uh, and, and then one needs to uh, select, uh, you know, some of your best uh, formulations and then uh, test it for them. Uh, you know, on that note, I might uh, add that, uh, you know, when because of the individual sensitivity of the viruses you know the test method as well as the type of virus that you use are typically not transposable you'll get a fair good idea but uh, you know you should test uh, the against uh, efficacy against the right virus uh, uh, similar to uh, the antibacterial uh, you know some of the tests that are uh, followed here are the JSL-1902 or the AATCC-100 for textile materials, as well as the JS-2801, which is similar to the 21702 test uh, for uh, uh, solid plastics. Uh, can go to the next slide, Matt. Uh, so how did we approach it? Uh, obviously, uh, first we made a, a master batch uh, based on some known traditional chemistries that we have been working with uh, uh, bacteria, uh, namely the silver, copper, zinc type of materials or some organics. And then we also uh, have, uh, you know, some new chemistries that we explored, uh, especially for uh, antiviral, uh, you know, some of those are, uh, you know, patent pending uh, uh, technologies. And then we, converted them into the desired article for testing. Uh, in case of textiles, for example, we spun it into a 3D PF polyester fiber and then knitted them into a textile fabric in the form of a knitted sock. And uh, when in the case of injection molded articles, uh, we made the mass batch in the appropriate resin and then injection molded uh, chips, which were then subjected to antimicrobial uh, 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 testing at an outside lab. And for this initial screening, uh, uh, as I talked about, we use the MS2 bacteriophage test. Uh, and uh, later on, on uh, some of the chemistries we use, actually evaluated using the SARS COVID, uh, SARS coronavirus, uh, using the both the 18184 as well as the 21702 tests. 
if we could go to the next slide, uh, Matt. So here, uh, what we are demonstrating is the screening of some of the initial uh, chemistries. Uh, you know, there are various materials listed here, uh, the AM101 or AM, sorry, AM001 or AM101. And then uh, uh, two uh, proprietary formulas. Uh, and in the last uh, two columns, you see the proprietary formulation two tested at two different levels uh, at two and a half percent and five percent use of the master batch. Uh, you know, while all of these uh, show good efficacy, uh, we were uh, particularly pleased with uh, both uh, the proprietary formulation one, uh, which showed uh, greater than 999 uh, efficacy even at two hours, and also the proprietary formulations uh, two, uh, which also show a good efficacy uh, uh, at uh, both two hours and 24 hour time frame. So, so having done some of this work uh, uh, in with the MS2 bacteria phage, uh, we did uh, uh, test uh, with the, some other viruses. Uh, the results are shown on the next slide here. Okay, so I, as I was telling you uh, earlier, you, you know, it was difficult to spot a lab uh, who would uh, test for uh, COVID, uh, sorry, the SARS coronavirus in the early days of the pandemic. Uh, you know, during that time, we tested uh, 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 the polyester textile material as well as a PP molding material uh, with the AM101 and A123 uh, with the uh, influenza A virus as well as the feline uh, Kelsey virus. And uh, as we gain more confidence, both with uh, the MS2 tests as well as with uh, these two viruses, we did uh, further uh, evaluation uh, using uh, with the SARS coronavirus. Um, as you see here with the, the one of the samples AM90, you know, we did the evaluation at four hours and 12 hours. And as you can see from the results, uh, there is not a huge difference. It's practically the same uh, efficacy. Uh, so we did not find a, a much more effectiveness at a longer period of time, uh, et cetera. So, and then we looked at, uh, you know, using followers as the uh, as the contact time. We looked at uh, three different uh, additives here: the AM90, uh, the proprietor, another proprietary formulations, and AM23. And we were particularly pleased uh, that uh, the both the AM123 and the proprietary formulation three do show somewhat of an improved uh, uh, efficacy related to the AM90. So, so you know, these are some of the results uh, that we could bank on. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, with, with all of the, this test data, you know, where can we use them? Uh, what are some of the applications uh, uh, that uh, we can uh, look into? Uh, Matt, uh, would you be able to uh, take our viewers to some of that? Absolutely. So you can see across the page here and through some of the previous uh, discussions we just had, you can employ these types of functional additives and, and gain antiviral performance, antimicrobial performance in, in both fibers and, and molded articles or extruded articles. Uh, a few examples here, performance of textile apparel. Um, if you have athletic apparel, uh, that needs to not only be lightweight and moisture wicking uh, and, and look good from a uh, aesthetic standpoint, but certainly um, many of the functional additives that VG just reviewed can be incorporated into the melt stream of, of such uh, textile um, fibers. On the other hand, put yourself in a gym or healthcare environment. In, in gym equipment, many touchable surfaces, um, and typically in those areas, you're going to be using moldable materials such as polycarbonate, PCABS, ABS, uh, polypropylenes, uh, maybe even nylons, all which can be uh, uh, functionally 
uh, compounded both in master batch form and full compound form with, with those functional additives. Uh, just circling back to the textile, typical materials of use there would be uh, PET, nylon, or in some case, olefins, again, uh, where we have uh, a, a high degree of experience. In the, in the healthcare environment, um, through some of the research we did coming into the presentation, where we were looking at um, how long some of these microbes might survive on a surface, some of the more common areas of focus have been hospital uh, bed rails, um, any type of IT equipment in that environment, uh, both the handheld mice to computer screens, uh, even flooring uh, within the hospital environment would be areas or applications which would use, again, serve types of materials such as uh, polypropylene, polycarbonate, PCABS, higher temperature materials uh, in, in some of the uh, instruments. And all of that can be uh, compounded into the compound or used in a master batch during the molding process. Transportation interiors, um, in my past experience, had a, a high degree of experience in commercial aircraft interiors with decorative laminates and even molded uh, articles, both thermoformed and injection molded, uh, things like seat back trays, uh, uh, auxiliary powder units overhead. Uh, here you're using, uh, again, higher top of the pyramid materials to pass the flame, smoke, and toxicity requirements of those um, types of uh, market segments. Um, and certainly you can take some of these effective uh, additives, put them into a polyether image, uh, into a flame retardant polycarbonate, uh, and other common materials that may be used in those environments. In the business machine market, uh, certainly any paper handling equipment um, where our engineering plastics uh, uh, division has a tremendous experience. Um, again, here you're gonna be dealing with PCABS, ABS, polycarbonates as well as well as other uh, performance compounds. And of course, consumer applications with a lot of TPE uh, in, in different durometers, um, it, it could be incorporated right into the compound with a custom color. Automotive interiors, uh, again, from hard surfaces, which would commonly be TPO uh, or, or custom or pre-colored polypropylene, um, and even um, the softer materials on your center console, your floor mats, your bin mats, your, your instrument panels where you'd be incorporating TPEs in a variety of different durometers, uh, again, can be incorporated and compounded with uh, antiviral type additives. So uh, those are some of the more common areas uh, and application areas of, of, of use and some of the materials that would be used for that. And I, um, and we'd be happy to answer any questions about your specific uh, applications. Yeah, Matt, uh, you know, it is a good time uh, uh, to remind our viewers that uh, the antimicrobial uh, chemistries are uh, regulated materials. Uh, you know, perhaps uh, we could uh, walk us through some of the regulatory aspects of these materials. Absolutely, BG. Um, in the industry, if, if one is to make a claim that your product is antimicrobial and, and has such efficacy, um, you must demonstrate and certify that you're using EPA certified additives. So by and large, Americam in all of our compounds and master batch are, are working closely with our material sciences group to use only EPA registered uh, functional additives. And, uh, and then we can make uh, such claims as that these products are antimicrobial in nature. Um, there's other agencies across the globe um, that, that, that lead the same way and, and you must comply also that way. So we do encourage everybody online, if you're an end user uh, incorporating uh, polymers uh, or, uh, or a tier two in automotive, certainly, um, you want to pay attention to this and, and, and get your application or article uh, fully certified with such um, regulated substances. Yeah, Matt, just to add, uh, you, you know, in case of this end products, uh, the actual testing has to be done on the end and, and product itself uh, for making such claims. Uh, and secondly, you know, you know the antimicrobial solutions antimicrobial agents seldom by are used by themselves uh, you know 
often you know when you're using a uh, a plastic article it's either colored or it may have uh, other functionalities built into for that desired application so you know we can design we have the we can customize the product for just the the antimicrobial antibacterial antiviral application as well as we can do a custom multi attribute match batch which could do both color as well as these properties together into one so those are great points Fiji um, with that, that concludes the technical uh, portion of our presentation. I'd like to turn it back to Haley to conclude today. Thank you, Matt and VG. That was a great presentation. I do want to briefly mention here that our next webinar does take place on August 19th and is titled Custom Engineered Compounds that are both durable and dazzling. You can sign up to be notified of all AmeriChem news on our website by going to the contact page and signing up for our monthly newsletter. We will now move into our Q&A portion of the webinar. I'll be reading off the questions that have been submitted and pass them on to our panelists for answering. I know we're a little bit over time here. We will be posting this recorded webinar to our website, but I want to get to as many questions as we can. Um, so let's take the first one here. Um, could the testing you described be applicable to non-woven materials, or are those materials requiring different testing standards? No, they would be apply the, the textile test, uh, the 18184 should be applicable to non ovens Okay, next question here. When applying the additive either on a non woven or molded article, is there any conditions such as temperature, UV light, et cetera, that could impact or reduce the antiviral efficacy? Uh, yes, ob obviously, you know, all of the solutions uh, that uh, we are providing is through a master batch. Obviously, we will take care of, uh, we'll be mindful of the processing temperature of uh, the polymer, and the products will be designed to be stable to, uh, thermally stable to that temperature. Uh, as far as the UV and other things are concerned, you know, by and large, majority of the applications are indoor, but, uh, you know, when the applications call for outdoor applications, obviously, uh, we will look that into consideration, choosing the right uh, uh, antimicrobial additive for that applications. And in some cases, uh, the choices are very limited for that, so. Yeah, and Viti, if I can add, uh, as you mentioned earlier, we'll probably take a fully functional approach to that particular master batch, not only incorporating the effective additives for antiviral or antimicrobial uh, efficacy, but also UV performance additives to make sure that the application survives in the case that, that it's an outdoor uh, application, for instance. Okay, next question here. Does the additive have an expiration time, such as once it's applied slash incorporated on the final application, is there an ex expiration date? Uh, we, we are not uh, aware of an expiration date. You know, many of these products uh, have been <coughs> in use uh, for several years, but again, uh, you know, if you're talking about, with the exception of some of the durable applications uh, you, you know the, you, you could last uh, you know 10 15 years or more and most of the other articles probably are not used that long so again it's important to note that this is not a topical additive uh, these are uh, incorporated into the compound into the master batch and therefore integral into the uh, the article itself yeah yeah so the dur durability is, is critical for uh, you know uh, applications uh, that are used for a long period of time so you know and, and they will be durable in, in those applications so okay our next question here is does the antimicrobial additive hamper slash modify other properties within the formulations um, matt i can take this one uh, you, you know generally no uh, uh, one uh, special case uh, that we have encountered, uh, especially if it is used in conjunction with the flame retardant. So, 
you, you know, you, you will have uh, some interaction. So, so we have to, whenever you are designing a multi attribute solution, you have to look at, uh, you, you know, the compatibility of the various ingredients that we are putting in, uh, because these are all chemical materials and have it, uh, you know, based on the chemistry can have a tendency to interact. So, so one needs to take care of that uh, while uh, making a custom uh, compound. So. Okay, our next question is, could it be used for a food contact application? Um, uh, I could take that, VG. Um, go ahead, go ahead. You know, certainly, I, I, I think there are certain of these additives that um, can carry an FDA um, certification and, and therefore be incorporated and in giving that efficacy and still being able for us to make the claim of an FDA um, uh, certified additives in our compounds. Yeah, you know, as far as, uh, you know, food contact is concerned, uh, I think it's good to have a upfront discussion on how and where and etc. because there are limitations uh, uh, with the direct and indirect food contact and uh, the maximum concentration of the additive and etc. So I, I think it's a it's a special topic. Yes, it can be used, uh, but more discussion is needed. Okay, next question is, are these master batches tested to pass ISO 10993 toxicity tests? We have not uh, uh, done uh, any of the, the in any of the test, uh, you know, that, that is something we will look into. So uh, again, Pusora asked this question. I think uh, if we can contact them uh, later, uh, we can discuss more on that and try to address. Okay, and the next one, have effects of exterior applications been studied in these, such as durability of performance through UV, ozone, or harsh cleaners? Uh, I, I'll, I'll uh, take this also, Matt. Um, uh, you, you know, as, as we touched on part of this uh, earlier in the question. Obviously, you know, if a particular, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, a particular application requires uh, some of these attributes, that had to be discussed further, and we'll try to incorporate. For example, when if you are using in in a, a carpet fiber application, uh, you know obviously the carpet is cleaned and it may be subjected to uh, you know harsh cleaners and etc. Also, uh, you know some of the light uh, effects uh, you know coming in uh, uh, from the windows, uh, you know the UV. Uh, the UV aspect has to be taken into consideration. Yes, I think case by case, I think to begin with the core uh, property is the antimicrobial property and the other properties uh, as well as how it is used. All of that uh, will be discussed and incorporated uh, into the solution, master batch solution that we'd be offering. So it, 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 it starts with a detailed discussion with the the customer uh, as to what the end application is is and what are the requirements and etc. So, yeah, and VG, if I may add, um, we have a complete array of uh, accelerated uh, weathering machines here at our corporate headquarters, as well as outdoor weathering uh, stations in Arizona, Florida, uh, for instance, in here in Ohio. And if you have a particular application, we don't we don't know if it's a molded article or a fiber article you're referring to. If you can contact us, we could we can work closely with you to do that weathering and test efficacy uh, as a control before and and after such exposure. Okay, we are at our time limit here, so I would like to briefly mention how you can ask us further questions after the webinar is over. If you have any other questions, you can certainly connect with our panelists on LinkedIn, but you can also go to the American website and ask us questions through the instructions on the next slide here. 
If you go to americam.com and click contact us, then choose the contact form that states I have a general corporate inquiry and choose the option to send the contact form to marketing. I'll be receiving all of these questions directly and follow up as soon as possible with our panelists. You can take a screenshot of these directions, but I'll also be sending out a follow-up email with directions in the email and a link to the contact page. So that wraps up our webinar. I'd like to thank our panelists for their time today, and I'd like to thank our attendees for joining Americam in this important discussion about antivirals and plastics. Thank you again for attending our webinar today, and that concludes our presentation. Th thanks, everyone, for attending. Yeah, thank you, everyone. We look forward to uh, you reaching out with further inquiries, and we'd be more than happy to help you. And have a great thank day. You guys. Have a great day. Bye now. Bye-bye.